We are less than a week away from UConn's opener for this college basketball season. And joining me is the head coach of their opponent. It's uh, Coach Shane Burkar of Northern Arizona. So, Coach, welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thank you, Jared, for having us and thinking of us as we prepare to play against the national champs on opening night. So we're looking forward to that opportunity to play in that kind of environment. Yeah, no, everyone's really excited for this game. So, So let's start with this. How does a game like this come together? Because I, I have to take it Northern Arizona is not coming out to the Northeast very much. No, uh, or ever, right? I think, you know, in my short time here, uh, just studying it, I think the farthest we've been away is probably Xavier. Okay. We opened up at Michigan State last year, which was great for us and Coach Izzo. And, uh, but I wasn't part of the Xavier staff when, when NAU went and played at Xavier. But um, how does it happen is uh, last year, the before last year, before the 22-23 season, you know, we got asked if we want to go out there and play, and uh, we just couldn't make it work. And then a couple of things happened this year. They asked again. We had our schedule full, and uh, they asked again, and you know, we hired Tim Russo, yeah. who, was a, who was a GA for him last year, and you know, nothing but good things to say about UConn basketball and Coach Hurley and his staff. So it was something that we entertained, and I kind of joked around with our players this summer. I said, hey, would, would you guys want to open up at UConn on opening night when they hang their banner? And we're going to use that as motivation and hopefully inspiration at the same time. So that that's how it all came about in the summer, and we kind of played with some dates. And, you know, in the case of UConn, some people want to play them, but most of the people don't want to. But, uh, hey, what a, be- what a better game. Couldn't be a better game for us on opening night. No matter what happens in a game, I like to think we'll be better because of it. Yeah, take me through what you what you hope to what this opportunity is is like for your team. You're going to be you know on a nationally televised game against the defending champs on opening night. Yeah, I think there's two ways. You look at it from a program perspective. Uh, we're opening up national televised game. You know, gives us some you know moxie. I would think, and you know our guys too. For us, our league, Big Sky, is a great league, underrated league. For sure. that being said, we're a one-bit league. So we go and play in stores, Connecticut, and play in that kind of environment. And, you know, we have 10 teams in our league trying to get to the NCAA tournament. But at the same time, whatever team does get to the NCAA tournament is going to play one of these type of teams, but it'll be at a neutral court. So that's one of the motivations. And as I said a little bit earlier, Jared, the other thing is for our players to see that, see that kind of environment. And I'll tell you what, we played Gonzaga a couple of years ago when they were number one in the country, and it made our team a better team. You cannot watch film and practice it. You just can't do that with UConn. Yeah. They're just different athletes. They're a great basketball team. But I think once you play them, I think uh, going against Coach Hurley could only make myself a better coach, which helps our program and our players to play against those type of guys. As you head into the season, talk about the expectations you have for your team heading into this year. And I know last year you guys had a great run in the uh, conference tournament there, had a a number of close games that unfortunately just didn't go your way. So take me through your expectations for your team heading into this season. Yeah, great question. You know, I I think when you see teams trending in the right direction, they they usually have a good last 10 games of the season. We most certainly did do that. I would say our last 16 conference games, and I'm saying that humbly, we, we were in every game. It wasn't like we we're out, we were never outclassed, and then we had our run. You know, the, our preseason rank is eight, which I was a little surprised with being full disclosure on it, and yeah. that most certainly cannot be right. Our expectations here are to compete for the Big Sky Championship. As I said, I know there's other nine other coaches and teams doing that, and I, I'm not doing it for bulletin board material, but – we really see ourselves as that team competing for a Big Sky Championship this year. As you look towards the the season as a whole, I, I know a lot of coaches that I've spoken to at the mid-major levels really in, enjoy playing these high-major teams to get their team, you know, playing at, at a higher level during that non-conference schedule. How do you find, because I, I know you just play a, a very tough schedule in general. You mentioned playing Michigan State, you know, last year. Um, I, I know you've got some really tough teams this year on your schedule. you got Grand Canyon, uh, San Francisco, a, a number of, of tough teams. So how do you use this non-conference to help your team uh, work towards accomplishing that goal of winning the big sky? Yeah, great question, Jared, and great awareness by you. 
Uh, on that, we want to play. We recruit big stage, big games, and we want to play in these type of games. As I mentioned, it only makes our program better. We're not gonna, you know, if we upset UConn or we get beat by UConn, that's not defining our season one way or the other. Last year is a great example that we played Michigan State, as we mentioned. We played Texas, and we also played Arizona State. You know, Arizona State. Uh, with Coach Bobby Hurley, Danny's brother. Yeah. You know, they were a couple free throws away from really putting that game on ice and re reaching a Sweet 16. And we also played Santa Barbara, who's a really tough team. We actually beat Santa Barbara last year. So those games only make you better for the Big Sky Conference. And, you know, you never know, right? You just don't know. Our, our team will be a, you know, 13, 14, maybe a 15 seed. But then all of a sudden, there's an upset in that first round. Now you're talking George Mason, VCU from several years ago. Yeah. You just don't know what happens. I'm curious, as you prepare for this opening game, uh, obviously your roster has changed. UConn's roster has changed. While there, there's still some pieces coming back, how do you go about preparing to play this UConn team, not having seen anything from this year's team You know, on film? Um, is it just looking at what they've done in the past, historic trends, things like that? Yeah, I think, you know, you look at UConn, they win a national championship, you know, for by, you know, average of plus 20, which is amazing. I don't know if that ever has been done. Maybe the 1990 UNLV running Rebs, maybe. I don't know. I'm just talking off the top of my head on that. But how we prepare for this, these early games, it's all about NAU basketball. We have great respect for every of our opponents. And, you know, last I saw UConn was preseason number six and, you know, obviously, we're going to try to pick up some of their tendencies and kind of what they're built on, you know, physicality and, you know, getting up and down the court and on defense. So, again, as I said, I don't know if we can practice that, but we can be prepared for that the best we can. But more than anything, Jared, we're focused on NAU basketball, and we look forward to that challenge. And, you know, they, they're going to have our scrimmage and our exhibition game that we play Thursday night. And I like that, knowing that they're prepared for us and, you know, I know with their staff, they're not going to have any stone unturned. I'm going to take a quick break from the interview to tell you about my friends at Martin Rosal's Meats. This fourth generation Connecticut family business produces kielbasa, hot dogs, sausages, and deli meats using Martin Rosal's very own original recipes. Their products can be found in grocery stores, delis, restaurants, and hot dog stands throughout the state. And if you're looking for your fill right away, check out their retail store in New Britain. For more information, visit martinrosalsinc.com and go support a UConn fan-owned business. And now, back to the interview. As you, you talk about NAU basketball, for, for those fans up here who might not have ever seen one of your teams play before, uh, yeah. take me through what, what NAU basketball is and what you mean by that. Yeah, I would say more than anything that we're, we're built on toughness. I think every game that you see us play, we're going to compete. We have high-character guys. Uh, our next step in our program is taking care of Flagstaff, Arizona, and the Big Sky Conference, uh, really winning games here and, and, you know, doing the best we can on the road. But I think you'll see a team that's going to compete. I think we're going to be um, a, a legit competitive team. We're not going to cheap shot and, you know, start pushing and, you know, being, you know, what I call unnecessary roughness. Like, we're going to be tough. We're going to compete with them. And, um, you know, no matter what the score is, we're not going to give in and, uh, we're just going to try to get better. As we talk about, every possession has a life of its own. As we're talking about your team and your style and culture there, break down yeah. the roster for me a little bit here and for the listeners who are coming out to this game, watching on TV, who, who should they be keeping an eye on from your team? Yeah, I, I would say on paper, if you if you know anything about us, Carson Tout, big guy. You know, the good thing that we did about with Carson, you know, he had a couple of rebound games with, you know, mid-teens and, He's a really good passer, best uh, five-man pass in the league. Had the assist, and um, he, he's he's somebody. Let me do it for him. He, he's somebody that I think uh, can rebound with anybody in the country. He's undersized, and we added Carson Basham, a true five-man from Pepperdine from the transfer portal that pushed Carson Tout over to his true four position. And you know the other three guys that we plan on starting are going to be Oakland Fort hit the big game-winning shot against Eastern Washington when we're, you know, top 10, number one on ESPN. That sports center, he's going to be a sophomore, and you know, he has the keys to the car for the next three years. And then we have Liam Lloyd and Trent McLaughlin. Ironically, Trent McLaughlin, first college basketball game was against UConn when he was at Central Connecticut. 
Huh, small world. Thing. And you know, a little tidbit is Liam Lloyd's the son of the head coach at Arizona, Tommy Lloyd. Okay. Yeah. So uh and we have some guys. Another guy, Jaden Jackson, has been playing really well. He's a sophomore on paper, but he missed the whole last season because of injury. And I know UConn has one of those type of players too that you know didn't play last year and have high hopes of him. So yeah, I think we I think we have a pretty physical roster. I, I'm curious. I know the the way of recruiting now is so different with the transfer portal. How do you go about finding a guy who played at Central Connecticut to come out to Northern Arizona? Well, truth be told, so that that's you're full of good questions here, Jared. Okay. He he's a Arizona kid. Okay. So I actually, when I was an assistant coach at NAU, he was the first kid that I was allowed to offer okay. his sophomore year. Then COVID hit. You don't see games and trying to get the portal and, you know, different ways to do it. And he ended up going to central Connecticut and putting his name in a portal. And, you know, we, we attacked him in a portal and, you know, he started several games for us last year. And again, he's somebody who'll start the next two years if he takes care of business. So he's from Basha high school, which is in Chandler two okay. hours from Flagstaff. Okay. All right. Uh, I, I've got to ask, uh, given uh who you mentions on your staff now, the, the new addition in Tim Russo, who UConn fans know of. Uh, I, I know a lot of people listening here and certainly know who his dad is. And his dad has told the story numerous times on radio about how uh, you guys got to talking. But but what did you see in Tim that, that you know, led you to hire him and bring him onto your staff? Yeah, a couple of things. I think to hire a young assistant coach like that, you have to have certain dynamics in place already. So, I you know, this will be my 26th year of coaching. I'm 51 years old, and uh, one of our lead assistants, Ben Johnson, he's you know he's 53 years old. So we have great experience there. Who can we can help nurture him and and help him along and let him grow on his own too. Like we're all going to make mistakes. I I know I still do, and I most certainly did when I was 24 years old, as Tim is. And we have a great up and coming coach who's 30 years old, Gary Bell, who played at Gonzaga, former top 50 player in the country. So and Coach Bell's been with me for a year. And so I think that's a dynamic that you can have. And, you know, I got to talk to Tim at the final four last year where, where I met his father, Chris, and his mom, Jean. And then, you know, the other thing, too, is Tim got the job on his own. He, he is very knowledgeable about his game, very loyal to uh, UConn staff and spoke highly of Coach Hurley. And, you know, sometimes people don't do that. Yeah. On a, You know, they'll, they'll kind of knock their boss. And, you know, as a head coach, that's the last thing you want. You want loyalty. And. The other thing, too, coming to Flagstaff, I think that's somewhere where he can cut his teeth and hopefully stay here for several years. And, um, you know, we want him as long as he can stay. But the one thing I do want to get straight is that he earned his job. It wasn't any favors or anything. And, you know, win a national championship sure doesn't hurt to put on his, um, you know, his pedigree and help our program. Are, are you relieved his dad is not going to be retiring after bashing the Diamondbacks, your your uh, local team there? Uh, it, it won't be hanging around in, in Flagstaff every night now? You know what? It's funny. So last night, game two, we went – or excuse me, game three, Chris got our staff tickets for the game. So we went down there and, oh. and, and hung out with Chris a little bit after his shows. And, and hey, if he wanted to move to Flagstaff, I'm game. We'll get him a spot to do his work. But his son, Tim, would, would be more nervous about it than that. He's like – because, you know, Chris is a big NAU fan now. And, yeah. you know, Coach Russo is very concerned if his dad would be here more times than not. So, <laughs> but, hey, I know Flagstaff and NAU would have him here any game. Yeah. Oh. Well, well, Coach, I, I really appreciate you taking some time to come on, uh, give UConn fans some insight into your program and your team this year. And I know everyone's looking forward to the opener. So thanks so much for coming on and uh, safe travels up here. And best of luck in, in not only this game, but your season as a whole. Yeah, again, thank you for having us, Andre, and we look forward to flying to Hartford and staying over or somewhere between stores and uh, Hartford. So okay, uh, it'll, be, it'll be a good time, and I'm um, looking forward to you guys. Tell me, any good Hartford Whaler uh, vintage sports stores to go to? Oh, all right. I'm, I'll get back to you on that. I'll shoot you an email. I there, We got plenty of that kind of stuff around here, so we'll, we'll yeah. get you a hat. One of the best emblems in all of sports, the Hartford Whalers. So we're looking forward to it. And thanks again for having us, Jerry. Yeah, no problem. Anytime. Thanks so much, Coach.